but it's one for the money, two for the show, three to get Throughout history, there have been singers with infinite talents. But one has charisma and magnetism. Blue eyes more transparent than water. A smile that can melt an iceberg. Striking stature and physique. Sensual and unique movements. A deep voice that caresses the soul. Accompanied by a guitar with rhythms that electrified audiences. And at the same time, possessing a spirituality that mesmerized fans. Although there are many imitators, only one transcends time and space to live eternally. Long live the king. Viva Elvis. Oh, I don't know what makes him think that. I, you know, this gold belt and the... <laughs> To say that Elvis Presley is the king of rock and roll is an understatement. He conceived his own rhythm and style. His influences were contemporary pop and country music, as well as gospel and R&B that captivated him as a young teenager in Memphis, Tennessee. His style combined diverse musical and cultural references and blurred the social and racial barriers of the time, ushering in a new era of music and pop culture. Elvis Presley starred in 33 films and made history with his television appearances and live concerts in Las Vegas. The king of rock and roll has sold more than one billion records worldwide. Record sales in the United States earned gold, platinum, and multi-platinum awards. He was nominated for four Grammy Awards, of which he won three, and received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award at the age of 36. His talent, good humor, perseverance, and kindness endeared him to millions of people. All this made him one of if not the most important figure of pop culture of the 20th century. On January 8, 1935, in Tupelo, Mississippi, Gladys Presley gave birth to twins in a humble shotgun house built by her husband, Vernon Presley. The firstborn, Jesse Garen Presley, did not survive. The second, Elvis Aaron Presley, was born, and his mother claims, with the strength of two. The couple raises their son in a blue-collar family. Growing up, Elvis regularly attends the Assembly of God Church with his family, where religious music inspired him. In addition, his childhood influences include rhythm and blues singers and the country music radio programs of the time. As a boy, Elvis sings in a talent contest at a local fair and wins fifth place.
After his mother gives him a guitar that costs $12.95, it never leaves his side. Gladys and Vernon decide to move to Memphis, Tennessee. Despite their hard work and efforts, they frequently move because they are unable to pay rent. Elvis enrolls at a public high school. And attends church regularly with his parents. The future star's passion is singing and playing the guitar. He is a regular member of both black and white gospel choirs. What would it profit? For Presley, the interracial interaction is natural. While in high school, he sings accompanied by his guitar and wins the student talent show. Elvis graduated from Humes High School in 1953. That summer, Elvis visits Sun Records music label and meets renowned music producer Sam Phillips. In the studios, he records a demo, My Happiness. And that's when your heartache begins as a birthday present for his mother. And decides to make another demo the following year. Sam Phillips' assistant, Marion Keisker, recognizes his talent and suggests they call Elvis to sing Without You, a song they want to record. Sam was not impressed with the performance and asked Elvis what else he could sing. Elvis decides to sing, That's All Right, Mama. The music producer immediately recognizes Elvis's talent and introduces him to local musicians Scotty Moore and Bill Black. The three get together and record a fast-paced rendition of That's All Right, Mama. Elvis, Scotty, and Bill begin performing together, and the trio quickly start touring. They perform for the first time at the Louisiana Hayride, a popular live country music radio show broadcast on Saturday nights from Shreveport, Louisiana. His fame grows and Elvis signs a one-year contract for 52 Saturday night appearances. Bob Neal, a country music promoter who managed Johnny Cash, Sonny James, and Tom T. Hall, becomes his manager. The young musician met Colonel Tom Parker, an agent for country stars such as Hank Snow, and Eddie Arnold, who perform regularly on the Louisiana Hayride. The trio continue to tour with country stars, including Hayride artists, in which the Colonel is part of the organization. The Colonel, realizing Elvis's potential, as he sees that his appearances have a unique appeal to teenagers, wants to manage his career and elevate it to another level. His unique style, handsomeness, and moves cause uncontrollable excitement wherever he performs. Sometimes, the fans push the limits and make it necessary for riot security to intervene. Soon after, Elvis signs a management contract with Hank Snow Attractions, owned by popular country singer Hank Snow and Colonel Tom Parker, who 
who has an overwhelming persona. A lifelong relationship develops between the Colonel and Elvis, who will be the exclusive manager throughout his career. The Colonel fiercely protected his clients' interests and the use of their image. He hired merchandising manufacturers to exploit the Elvis Presley name as a brand that went on to generate hundreds of millions of dollars and continues to do so today. The Colonel came up with the idea of combining Elvis's singing career with a film career. At first, as a publicity for his music. Later, the king of rock and roll discovered that he was passionate about acting and always wanted to be recognized as a serious actor. But he never succeeded. In the face of growing success, Colonel Parker negotiates the sale of Elvis's contract with Sun Records to RCA and gets him to sign a contract with the Hill and Range Publishing Company, which will create an independent company, Elvis Presley Music Incorporated. Elvis conducts the first of many recording sessions in Nashville. Among the first songs recorded is I Was the One. The single sold over 300,000 copies in its first three weeks on the market. Elvis earns his first gold record for Heartbreak Hotel. Elvis shaped the history of music with his interpretation of classic country and rhythm and blues in a much more energetic and dynamic style. The king of rock and roll is born. Elvis appears on CBS in the Jackie Gleason-produced stage show with his friends Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. It is his first appearance on television. I forgot to remember to forget and Mystery Train, the fifth and final single he released on the Sun Records label, reached number one on Billboard's Country Singles Chart. RCA releases Elvis Presley, the first Elvis album to reach number one on Billboard's Pop Albums Chart, where it remains for 10 weeks. It reaches over one million in sales, earning him his first Gold Album Award. He first appears on The Milton Berle Show, a top-rated program of the time, from the deck of the aircraft carrier USS Hancock, and does so for the second time performing Hound Dog. Dancing and gyrating his hips. This delights teenagers and young adults, but upsets the more traditional adult viewers. The conservative establishment and the religious community are not comfortable with his movements or his black-influenced sound. Soon after, he appears on The Steve Allen Show and performs a more subdued version of Hound Dog. Dressed in a black tuxedo with tails, he is asked to sing the song to a basset hound. Elvis attempts, but later claims to have been humiliated by doing so. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, you cry all the time. Well, you ain't never gonna rent a hand, you ain't no friend of mine. The Jordanaires, a gospel quartet and popular country group, began working with the singer. They would later appear in several of his films and remain his main backup group until the late 60s. The Colonel, determined to make Elvis a superstar, gets him his first role in a movie. Love Me Tender with Deborah Paget.
it is a resounding success. Ed Sullivan, one of the most influential people in the television industry at the time, who had said he would never have Elvis Presley on his show because he thought it was too risque, changed his mind when he saw the audience Elvis attracted to other shows. Now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, that's right, Elvis Presley. Elvis makes the first of three appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show, achieving the highest ratings of any variety program and receiving an 80% share of the national audience. By now, he has become the main symbol of the new youth culture in the United States. His music, a unique blend of country, gospel, R&B, and pop, combined with his charisma and the controversy he generates, initiate considerable changes in pop culture and the norms of society at the time. Nineteen fifty-seven, On January 6th, Presley makes his third and final appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. However, this time the producers of the program decide to film him only from the waist up to avoid criticism from those who considered the artist's movements too obscene. Soon after, Paramount releases his second film in his first starring role, Loving You, with Lisbeth Scott. Loving You, the first big modern musical built around the fiery personality of Elvis Presley. Elvis transforms his style, dyes his hair black, and dons his famed pompadour, always in place. In addition, his iconic upper lip curl drives audiences crazy. The only thing I can say is to, uh, to play it straight and, and, and do your best because you can't fight them. The result of his work leaves significant profits, and he decides to buy Graceland, a mansion in Memphis, to live with his parents and paternal grandmother. Elvis purchased the house for $102,500. He then performs for the first time outside the United States and Canada. Upon his return, he begins filming his third film, Jailhouse Rock. The musical number featured in the movie is a precursor to music videos, which became popular in the 1980s. Elvis returns to Canada to perform in a third Canadian city, Vancouver. This marks the final time the King will perform a concert outside the United States. Legend has it that Colonel Parker did not have his documents to obtain a passport, which prevented Elvis from ever performing internationally. Soon after, Elvis performs for the first time in Hawaii, his last public appearance until... Elvis Presley was drafted. He gets his famous haircut at Fort Chaffee, Arkansas, before traveling to Fort Hood, Texas, where he is stationed for six months, completing military training. A gyrating guitarist's departure from the public eye left his blue jean fans all... Meanwhile, Elvis's fourth film, King Creole, co-starring Carol Jones and Walter Matthau is released. 
Now you know what I do for an encore. Now he crowns his meteoric rise to fame with a fiery burst of dramatic power as hard-loving, hard-hitting Danny Fisher, who sang his way up from the gutters of lusty, brawling New Orleans. His performance receives the best reviews of his filmic career. Shortly thereafter, Presley's mother becomes ill and is hospitalized with acute hepatitis. The star receives special leave, goes to Memphis, and doesn't leave her side until the following evening when he goes to Graceland to rest. Hours later, his mother suddenly dies. Elvis, who was very close to his mother, returns to Fort Hood completely devastated. A little over a month later, he takes a troop train to New York and boards the USS Randall to Germany, where he will be stationed in Friedberg. I was very surprised. Uh, I, I've never met a, a, a better group of boys in my life. At the same time, Captain Joseph Bewley is transferred from Texas to Germany, accompanied by his wife and children, including his 14-year-old stepdaughter, Priscilla Ann. Shortly after arriving in Germany, a mutual friend invites her to a party Elvis will be attending. Although her parents believe she is too young to go, Priscilla accepts. Elvis is mesmerized by her beauty and falls in love with her at first sight. While Elvis is on duty, Colonel Parker promotes the King of Rock and Roll's career, raising expectations about his return. His earnings from records alone totaled nearly $2 million. He was and still is the best-selling single recording artist in history. When he returned to the States in 1960, Elvis is promoted to sergeant right before his time in the Army comes to an end. At Fort Dix, New Jersey, Sergeant Elvis Presley is mustered out after two years of Army service. The rock and roll idol of millions is back on the scene. He returns to Memphis to continue his artistic career. Presley has his first recording session after the Army, and the album is called Elvis is Back. The heartthrob of the era, 45-year-old Frank Sinatra, was seeing his popularity threatened by a man 20 years younger who had returned to drive audiences crazy. On the advice of his daughter Nancy, Sinatra decides to join him instead of declaring war and organizes a television program to celebrate Elvis's return. We work in the same way, only in different areas. Elvis receives $125,000, which at that time is a record sum for a variety show appearance. The special took place at the renowned Fountain Blue Hotel in Miami. Old Blue Eyes and the King of Rock and Roll thrilled audiences, performing each other's songs in a memorable duet. The episode was a huge success obtaining 42% share of the television audience. Man, that's pretty. <laughs> and I always After, Presley begins filming and recording the tracks for his first post-army film. G.I. Blues, co-starring actress and dancer Juliette Prouse. One of them the film's soundtrack is number one on the Billboard charts for 10 straight weeks and remains on the list for more than two years, becoming the most successful album of Elvis's entire career on the Billboard charts. G.I. Blues opens with great numbers at the box office and is one of Elvis's most successful films. He then begins filming and recording the music for his seventh movie, Wild in the Country, co-starring Hope Lang, Millie Perkins, 
and Tuesday Weld to be released the following year. But I'll be true to you in my way. That same year, Elvis also films Flaming Star, co-starring Barbara Eden, in which he plays the son of a white father and a Native American mother in the 19th century. The Blue Hawaii soundtrack album enters the Billboard chart, remaining at number one for 20 weeks. Blue Hawaii sold 2 million copies in the first 12 months alone. When Blue Hawaii was released, it quickly gained recognition as one of the best Elvis movies. Its characteristics of a light plot and lavish scenery, combined with his music and pretty girls, became the formula for the Presley films of the 60s. Elvis shoots his next movie, Girls, 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 between Hollywood and Hawaii. Priscilla, 17, visits him on the set. It is the first time they see each other since he left Germany. They are totally in love. The following year, at age 18, Priscilla moves to Memphis. And while Elvis is in Hollywood shooting Fun in Acapulco, she graduates from high school. Shooting then begins on Viva Las Vegas, co-starring Anne Margaret, with whom the King started an affair with during filming. Even though Priscilla is his girlfriend and lives with him, he cannot resist Anne Margaret, who later described her romance with Presley as a force we cannot control. They had a lot in common, singing, acting, and dancing with incredible chemistry, although they competed to see who was better. Right after, they began seeing each other off camera and secretly dated for over a year. I'm just, I'm just so nervous and I'm just, I'm very excited and uh, very honored to be just even a small part of this. They continued calling and sending each other love letters and having clandestine meetings, even though Presley was dating Priscilla. Elvis and Anne Margaret remained friends after their romance. He would send her flowers during every performance she had in Las Vegas. If you don't want to dance, sing. I know you can do that. Come on, everybody, and turn your head to the right. On November 22, 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated. Elvis was stunned. He was always very patriotic and concerned about anti-Americanism. Viva Las Vegas premieres. By the end of the year, it surpasses The Beatles' A Hard Day's Night and becomes Elvis's highest grossing film ever. That same year, Colonel Parker renegotiates the star's future film contracts with United Artists and MGM reaching his goal of $1 million per film for Elvis. Elvis works non-stop, recording the soundtrack and shooting Harem Scarum, co-starring Mary Ann Mobley. Speaking of new faces, how do you like this one? It's Shelley Fabre. She's delectable, she's talented, and she's with Elvis. He then records the music and films Frankie and Johnny, co-starring Donna Douglas. Frankie and me, we are lovers. Oh, Lordy, how we can love. Elvis decides to propose to Priscilla the same year he records and releases the gospel music album How Great Thou Art which wins the Grammy Award for Best Sacred Performance. It is the first of the King's three Grammy Awards. Elvis then records the soundtrack and films Clambake, the third Elvis film co-starring Shelley Fabares. On May 1st, 1967, Elvis marries Priscilla in a private ceremony 
accompanied by a small group of family and friends at the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. The couple spends a few days honeymooning in Palm Springs and returns to Memphis. Both our Memphis natives and Elvis, 32, gave Priscilla Ann, 22, a wedding ring with 21 diamonds. Why did the pelvis desert bachelorhood? Said he, it's about time. 28 days later, Elvis and Priscilla hold a second reception at Graceland for family and friends who were not in Las Vegas when they were married. Elvis records the soundtrack and shoots Speedway, co-starring Nancy Sinatra. Meanwhile, Priscilla's pregnancy is announced. Come on and sing, 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 sing. There ain't nothing like a song. February 1st, 1968. Priscilla gives birth to Lisa Marie Presley. The time has come for Elvis to return to his roots. He rehearses for his iconic TV show, The 68 Comeback Special. The Colonel sells it to the networks as a Christmas special, but Presley has other plans. The real name of this historic special is Elvis. Directed and produced by Steve Binder, who plans to renew and boost the King's career as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones begin to compete with him for international fame. The 1960s marked a transformation in music and pop culture, a change that Elvis had begun more than a decade earlier with his unique blend of pop, rock, country, R&B, and gospel influences. Many of the albums he released in recent years were movie soundtrack albums. Elvis wants to evolve. It's been more than seven years since he last performed live. He needs to be close to his audience, and the special is the perfect opportunity to show everyone who he really is. The show begins with Elvis singing a new version of Trouble, from his 1958 film, King Creole. In the special, he reunites with two of his original band members from the 1950s, guitarist Scotty Moore and drummer DJ Fontana. They sit on stage, along with other musicians, for an informal session of singing, improvising, and storytelling. It's a meeting between friends in which anyone in the audience felt they were part of the show. Elvis then takes the stage alone and performs his rock hits and ballads. He wears a black leather two-piece suit from the jam session and solo performances before moving to the emotional gospel music portion of the show. At the end of the special, he appears alone in a classic white suit in front of a backdrop of red lights that reads, Elvis. Thank you. Good night. Earl Brown and Billy Goldenberg composed this song to convey Elvis's sentiments. It debuted as the final of Elvis's 68 comeback special and replaced I'll Be Home for Christmas as the show's grand finale. He concludes his film contract obligations and returns to making music and concert performances. Nineteen sixty-nine. This period is considered the best part of his musical career. He works with Memphis musicians and records In the Ghetto, Don't Cry, Daddy, Kentucky Rain, and Suspicious Minds, all of which become number one hits. Elvis returns to Hollywood to film and records the music for the soundtrack of his last acting role in a movie, Change of Habit, co-starring the attractive and highly acclaimed TV actress of the time, Mary Tyler Moore. Charo, a dramatic western produced the previous year, is released in theaters but does not perform well. 
Elvis goes on to perform 57 hit shows at the International Hotel in Las Vegas, accompanied by rock and roll musicians, an orchestra, as well as gospel rhythm and blues groups. His first live album, Elvis in Person at the International Hotel, is recorded during these shows. At the shows, Elvis is dressed to impress, with his iconic, unique, karate-inspired two-piece suit in black or white. Over time, his simple attire became flashier and more elaborate, with capes and scarves. His passion for martial arts accompanied not only on stage, but throughout his life. Elvis had developed an interest in karate while in the military, and had received a first-degree black belt. Years later, he earned a second degree. He loved animals and was fond of dogs, horses, and his chimpanzee scatter. Other interests in his life included cars, which he proudly collected, as well as guitars and badges. He was generous with gifts to his loved ones, as he greatly valued friendships, particularly the group he coined the Memphis Mafia. This so-called mafia was made up of friends from his childhood and youth who accompany him throughout his career and whom he likes to keep close to protect him from the loneliness of fame. For this reason, and according to their talents, he personally hires them to perform tasks such as bodyguards, security guards, trainers, and drivers. Any excuse was a good one to have his friends around. All hires had to dress in black suits, and one of the conditions of working for Elvis was that they had to always be polite to fans. The Memphis Mafia was sort of a brotherhood, a group that worked together to stay close to Elvis. In 1969, The Trouble with Girls, filmed the prior year with Marilyn Mason, was released in theaters. Elvis returns to Las Vegas for a month of concerts. The live album of these shows is titled On Stage. He then releases the single The Wonder of You, known as one of his emblematic songs. He records several singles and the albums Elvis Country and Love Letters from Elvis, then returns to Las Vegas for the Elvis Presley Summer Festival, making this the first tour since 1957. MGM films the first show to use in the documentary, That's the Way It Is, and an album of the same title is released, I Just Can't Help Believe In. December 21st, 1970 marks an unprecedented event when Elvis is received at the White House by President Richard Nixon without prior appointment. The artist wanted to meet with Nixon to offer his services in the war against drugs. He wanted to distance himself from the rock and roll image associated with addiction and help promote the anti-drug campaign. Elvis traveled to Washington and, to keep attention away, checked into a hotel under an alias. The next day, he and two of his bodyguards went to the White House entrance, where Elvis handed the guard at the door a handwritten letter addressed to Nixon, stating that he did not associate or agree with the drug culture, and that he wanted nothing more than to help his country, and requested to be designated a federal agent. Elvis presented him with a World War II Colt 45 pistol. Nixon later sent a note to Elvis thanking him for the gift and for the visit at the White House. In 1971, Elvis experiences pain and swelling in one eye and is later diagnosed with secondary glaucoma. He wears large glasses, sometimes even on stage. Soon after, he performs in Las Vegas at the International Hotel, now the Las Vegas Hilton International Hotel, shortly after he goes on a 12-city concert tour. <laughs> Travels keep him away from home 
and creates distance between him and Priscilla. In early 1972, Elvis and Priscilla separate, and she moves out with Lisa Marie. In April, the gospel album He Touched Me, recorded the prior year, is released, which earns Elvis his second Grammy Award. That year, he made history by performing four sold-out shows at New York's Madison Square Garden. Sean Lennon, George Harrison, Bob Dylan are some of the music stars in attendance. Once the separation of Elvis and Priscilla is formalized, he begins to spend more time with Linda Thompson, who became his partner until the end of 1976. Elvis reaches number two on the pop charts with the single Burning Love and goes on a seven-city concert tour. The last one is in Honolulu, Hawaii, where he performs three shows at the Honolulu International Center. He makes television and entertainment history with Elvis Aloha from Hawaii via satellite and is broadcast live to Australia, South Korea, Japan, Thailand, the Philippines. It is seen on tape in about 30 European countries. In the United States, it attracts 57% of television audience and is seen in more U.S. households, surpassing the amount of viewers of Man's First Walk on the Moon. Roger, that's a good sight. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. In total, it is viewed in 40 countries by one and a half billion people. Elvis wears the American Eagle in his costume in this show as a patriotic message to the audience worldwide. Oh, let our love survive, oh no, oh, draw the tears from your eyes. The concert album Aloha from Hawaii reaches number one on the Billboard Pop Albums chart. It is his first number one album since the Roustabout soundtrack album in 1965. Elvis and Colonel Parker sell Elvis's music rights to RCA, and the idol enters a new seven-year contract with RCA. Elvis and Colonel Parker also sign a new management contract, becoming equal partners. Elvis and Priscilla legally divorce, but remain friends. Although they have joint custody of Lisa Marie, there is no formal visitation schedule, and he and his daughter spend as much time together whenever the king of rock and roll is available. He goes on to record the albums Promised Land and Good Times. In the years leading up to his death, the star tours and records, each time selling out events. He also performed in a CBS television special called Elvis in Concert. He returns to perform at the Las Vegas Hilton, as well as the Houston Astrodome, and setting a one-day attendance record with his two shows. Thank you very much. He then worked on the screenplay for The New Gladiators, a documentary film centered on the combats of the U.S. karate team. Elvis's live recording of How Great Thou Art from the album performed at one of his concerts in Memphis on March 20th, 1974, wins the Grammy for Best Inspirational Performance. This is Elvis's third and final Grammy win out of 14 nominations, a posthumous nomination. The three Grammys he won were for his gospel music. Elvis buys a Conair 880 and renames it Lisa Marie. He records in Graceland Studios the songs that make up the upcoming album from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, more than half of the forthcoming Moody Blue, and his latest single, Way Down. Elvis and Linda Thompson separate. Soon after, he meets Ginger Alder, who became his steady girlfriend until his death. In December, he performs for the last time at the Las Vegas Hilton and ends the tour with a special New Year's Eve concert. I'm 
never, I ain't never did no wrong. 1977 marks the last year of performances. He performs a concert tour and shows are recorded by RCA for an upcoming live album, Elvis in Concert, a special that Elvis never gets to see on TV. On June 26, 1977, he gave his last concert at the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Two. On August 16, 1977, after midnight, Elvis returned to Graceland after a late night visit to the dentist. He retires to his room at Graceland around 7 a.m. to rest for his evening flight. Just hours later, Elvis Presley suffered a fatal cardiac arrest that was later attributed to medication, depression, poor diet, and overwork. Life without the king of rock and roll was hard to imagine. However, his death led to the birth of a legend that revolutionized the music universe forever. Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, starring Tom Hanks, Austin Butler, and Olivia de Jong, revived the myth and the fever that has always awakened the king of rock and roll, the musician that sleeps from time to time, only to awaken again, more alive than ever and forever. Long live the king. Viva Elvis.